All right, so now that we've talked about how to send an email when you're working from the contact manager, let's talk about emails being sent while you're making calls in the dialer. So let's go back to our list of contacts, and let's select a page of contacts and begin a dial session. All right, so we're now in a dial session. I'm going to go ahead and hit Start Dialing, and let's talk about the email options. One of the most common options for sending emails during a dial session is going to be based off the disposition click. So that's what we talked about earlier on in assigning emails to the dispositions. So had we assigned an email to the voicemail button, when we click the voicemail button, that would not only leave a voicemail, but it would also send an email. And as you're going through your dial session and the system is triggering those emails, you'll actually see this number count go up. Let's go ahead and mark Sasha as a no answer, and let's move on. Now you may have noticed that that just jumped from zero to two, and that's because emails are not always sent immediately. Behind the scenes, there's a lot of programming happening, and so emails are not triggered at the moment of button click, but they are queued up to be sent on the button click. So now I'm going to go ahead and mark this as live answer and end the call because I want to talk to you about some other options within the dial session. One of the options for sending an email in a dial session is this menu right here where it says email to send. This option will show you a list of all of the emails in your OneTouch library. Let's say we just booked an appointment with Sally Sample, but we don't want to send the getting started details email, which is the email that's assigned to the booked appointment button. Let's say we wanted to override the email setting on that button. That's what this option is here. I can choose a different email and then I can lock it in. This little lock tells PhoneBurner that whatever selected here should override whatever is assigned to the disposition down here. Another option is let's say there is an email that is assigned to the disposition, but I don't want it to be triggered. I don't want any email to be triggered. If I leave this to email to send, which is no email selected, and I lock it in, the disposition I click on will not trigger an email. And then finally, another email that you can trigger when you're in a dial session is found under the Actions menu here. If we go to the Actions and down to Schedule Follow-up, that will bring up our calendar where we can schedule a call with this contact. When we schedule a call with the contact, we will have the option to send an appointment email if we've created or have access to any appointment emails on our account. We'll be able to select the appointment email and save changes, and the system will trigger that email to be sent to the contact. So those are the different ways that you can trigger an email when you're in a dial session. At this time, I'd recommend that you go and do a test dial session to yourself as a contact to trigger the email either from the disposition or from the lock menu or from the appointment calendar. Once you've done some testing, come back and let's continue the training.